here, gonna try to do this real quick again, because my phone apparently ran out of storage last time after only 13 minutes of filming, which doesn't make sense, but whatever. We're gonna try to just condense this, talk less or whatever. Um, October happened. I obtained books in October. This is a kind of semi-late video, but here are all the books that I obtained in October. Uh, some of them I try to be on theme and they're kind of spooky or mystery or thriller or witchy or some sort of October Halloween-y element, and the rest are just books that I really wanted within the month or that somebody gifted to me within the month that happened to just be books I obtained in that time. Um, but yeah, I'll try to give the rundown of like where I got it and all of that shit and be quick about it. First book I have here. They're out of order. I usually have them in the order that I got them in the month, but whatever. It's They're out of order right now. Um, is a Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. Clearly, based off this ugly ass sticker that won't come off, I got this at Target. Um, I was, I pulled aside probably like four or five, um, mystery, mystery thriller books that I was interested in that they sell at Target because I wanted to buy one, but I wanted to buy one that was cheap and that I was interested in enough so that I could spend the rest of my time there just reading it. Uh, I narrowed it down between two books because I kept reading those chapters back to back and I ended up getting like into the first 20 pages of these two books because I could almost not decide which one I wanted more. Um, this is the one that won out and that I bought that day, but then I bought the other one when I had more money, which I will get to it. It's the next one in the pile. But this is basically the movie tie-in, if you couldn't um, tell, of that movie that is recently came out of Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. This was why I was interested in this, because the movie looked good and interesting and weird to me. It's about these two moms. Um, one is Emily, and the other one is Stephanie. And Stephanie owns, like, a mommy blog, and uh, their friends, their, their kids are friends at their s school. And then they meet, and they become close friends themselves, and then one day Emily goes missing. And the story just kind of takes off from there. It is surprisingly really good and I'm still currently reading it I am let's see I would say a decent amount into it like that there you go um so I'm about two-thirds of the way through it I would highly recommend it for people who like um adult kind of more I guess women driven mystery thrillers this is good um next the other one that I was torn between and that I ended up getting Again, still has the ugly sticker because I'm not sure if this one will come off because I don't want to ruin the other one and that's why that was still on there and I don't want to start ruining this one if that makes sense. This is Return to Fear Street. Um, the series name is that. Uh, the book is called The Wrong Girl and this is by Arl Stein. First of all, I love the cover designs for these new ones that make it look like an old, like, beat up paperback. It's fucking so nice. Um, but this is basically so intriguing. It's this group of friends, primarily this girl whose point of view you're following, and this guy, I think he's a new kid or just a kid that's like known as the notorious bad boy of the school or whatever, uh, he starts hanging out with that group and trying to convince them to do dares, and they start doing all these dares to prove that they're cool, to prove that they can be interesting and all that stuff, and it escalates until where the book starts off, and it's them with a gun about to shoot somebody and then you kind of learn like how we got to this point it was it's addicting it seems really good and i read like the first 20 pages of it and i know that i'm going to be into it when i start full-on reading it so there's that next i got this while i was at walker stalker con the walking dead primarily slash horror convention um that happens every october in atlanta at least for me um, and this is called This Land of Monsters by Tim Gabriel. Um, this, I don't know a lot about it except that it's a uh, post-apocalyptic zombie novel. Um, but I wanted to, I've always wanted to support the indie publishers because lots of people sell their, like, small-time, like, uh, horror books there and they have stands for them and stuff. So I decided to splurge, get this one full price. I think it was, like, 15 bucks. It was a pretty penny. But I also got it signed and personalized by the author when I purchased it. So, excited to get into this one eventually, and hopefully it's good, and I discovered, like, a little low-key hidden gem. Here's this one. 
Then, one of the only other books in this entire haul that I spent full price on is The Life and Crimes of Richard Ramirez, The Night Stalker by Philip Carlo. That's a mouthful. This is obviously a non-fiction book about Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker, uh, who, you know, murdered and I think sexually assaulted, or maybe he was just a murderer, uh, but like, he killed a lot of people. And, um, I started reading this at Barnes & Noble. Again, I was doing that thing where I was reading the first chapter of a couple of different things, and this one stood out to me the most. And I'm just fascinated by him, and I want to get more into other serial killers that are not just Jeffrey Dahmer, because I love Jeffrey Dahmer to death, but I want to, like, learn more about other people. So, this one I'm excited to get into. And see, so far, they're, like, all on theme. They're, like, all mystery thrillers or, like, horror books. Um... Next one, Got a Goodwill, The Cabin by Natasha Preston. This is, um, I always wanted to get one of the books by her because she's a Wattpad author and I wanted to support somebody who came from Wattpad and ended up making a career for themselves because I think that's so cool and I'm hoping that I can obtain that one day. This is a classic, like, bunch of teens go out to a cabin in the woods and start getting killed off. I'm excited. This was the most intriguing one to me out of all of her books and boom, cheap because Goodwill. Um, so, yes. Excited to get into that one. Next one, also got from Goodwill, Party Games by Earl Stein. This is a Fear Street novel for when he revived the Fear Street series. I grew up reading those more so than actually Goosebumps, like a lot of people. Um, th that was, like, his series that I got addicted to and that got me into reading, that got me into horror, all of that jazz. Um, so I don't really know what this one's about too much, I just know that it's one of my favorite authors reviving one of my favorite series, and I wanted it, and it was cheap. Boom. Okay. Next one, my mom picked up for herself, and then I kind of stole it from her because I needed it. And um, this is one of those large print double book things. Um, it, it has a book called The Dollhouse by Fiona Davis. I don't know what that is. I didn't want it. Um, but the other book in this is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which she's been blowing up on booktube because of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but also this has been like the second favorite that I've heard for everyone. And it's like a love triangle between adults, but it's really heart-wrenching and stuff. And boom, it has a large print. So cool. I don't have to wear my glasses when I read this. Um, and I know that I'm going to love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much that as soon as I finish that, I'm going to want to be like everybody else and pick up everything that Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote. So I'm glad that I have this one on standby, especially because it sounds really intriguing. So yes. Then, I have The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. This one... Earlier this year, I read Love, Life, and the List by Casey West. It's one of my favorite books I read the entire year. So I've just slowly been obtaining anything that is mad cheap. I believe I spent like two books on this that I can get my hands on that is by her. And even before I read any of her books, this was the one that intrigued me the most because I love the fake dating trope. And uh, yes, that's basically what this is. I don't know anything more than that besides the fact that it involves that. And that's all I need to know because you should go in semi-blind to contemporary books, at least I think so. So hyped for this. Yes. Next, we have The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is the prequel to Practical Magic, uh, the popular book that got turned into a pretty popular, at least in my opinion, movie. Um, this focuses on the witchy aunts that raised the main girls of Practical Magic, and it's them when they're younger, so ergo prequel. I don't know which order I want to read them in, because I'm just a big fan of the movie, and I own Practical Magic, the book, but I don't know what order I want to read them in, but a friend slash acquaintance of mine, he read this and he said it was really good. So I'm excited to get into this eventually. Witchy books. For the win. Yes. Um, next, I have All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This I bought earlier full price for my mom because I always encourage whenever there's like something about reading that people like, like only oh, I... I only read books about video games, or I only read this and that, and my mom primarily is in love with all things Colleen Hoover, so as soon as Colleen Hoover comes out with a new book, or we get one traded in or whatever, I make sure that if she doesn't own it, I buy it for her. So I bought that one full price for her, and then shortly after we got it traded in, so I bought this one for myself. Um, this is her most recent release, and the only thing I know about it is that I think it's adult instead of new adult, like most of her books, and it's about a married couple, so you're kind of already going into an established pairing which is interesting. I don't need to know anything more about that, more than that, because I already know I love her writing, so I know that I'll either love it or not, and um, I'm excited to go in blind. So this is another one I have. I've heard good things, really good things about that one, actually. 
Next, we have a Mad Wicked Folly by Sharon Biggs Waller. This was a gift from my sister. Um, this is a YA book that kind of reminds me or gives me vibes of like the Etiquette and Espionage series, which I obtained last year, the first book of, because the concept seems interesting to me. But I didn't really like the execution and I ended up DNFing it and getting rid of the book. So hopefully this will be a better attempt for me. The, like, literally, the opening sentence at least has already caught me more than, like, wh however much you're out of the other book. It says, I never set out to pose nude. I didn't, honestly. But when the opportunity arose, I took it. Like, if you start off a book like that, I'm probably gonna like this shit. So, I'm excited for that one. Next, also a gift from my sister, we have Empire, the Unauthorized Untold Story by Robert Hamm. Uh, this, first of all, the texture and, like, the look of it, freaking love it. Um, this is basically a book for people who are fans of the TV show Empire. Um, and it has different, like, quotes, different stories, different interviews with the cast and people, and I collect books like these for all of my favorite TV shows. I'm a big fan of Empire. I'm glad I own this and I have it in my collection so that when I finally have all of my books out of storage and have a setup, I have a shelf with all of my TV show books, and this will go on there. Um, next is probably the book that I am most excited about out of this entire haul. And uh, we got it traded in, so I paid 15 bucks for it because it's still brand new, but it's half price of what I would normally spend on it. And that's an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Um, I adore the Vlog Brothers. I adore Hank and John. I love John's book so much. John Green is one of my favorite authors ever. Um, and I love the way they both view and speak about the world. So I assume that based off of all of that, I'm going to love this. Plus... You know, Hank got to do the thing that John always does whenever he is releasing a new book where he reads out loud the first chapter of it. And just listening, listening to his writing style and the voice of, like, his main character and all that stuff, I just know I'm going to love this. And I immediately wanted to own it, and then boom, we got it traded in, and I was like, this is a sign that I need to own this book right now. And so I have it. I'm excited about it. And uh, I don't know too much about it because I'm trying to going completely blind and it's here it's beautiful it's this is probably going to be like the next book i read so we have that next is one of my favorite books uh i had already read it because i read my mom's copy and that is maybe someday by colleen hoover this is a new adult romance book about this girl who finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her and then she ends up just wanting to immediately get out of that apartment and move out, so she goes to one of her, like, next-door neighbors that's, like, this sexy musician, and things take off from there. Um, this has good, uh, disability rep, <coughs> and it's beautifully written. It has lots of problematic elements in it because it is a Colleen Hoover book, but it is one of my favorite books in this genre, my, one of my favorite books by her, like, besides November 9th, um, and I'd highly recommend it. And I was excited when we got it traded in because I was like, finally I can own it. Boom. We're almost done. We have the only arc in this haul. Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. This is a nonfiction book that comes out February 12th of 2019. So we still have like a couple months. And I'm excited to get into it because I've heard rave reviews about his books. This is a nonfiction book I think about technology and how it induces anxiety in us and in our current society and his relationship with that. And I'm excited to get into that. Next is the only other book in this haul that I have read, and that is The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hudkin. This is the first book in the Mara Dyer trilogy. I have owned and read this already for many years, <laughs> um, but the reason I picked up this copy is because um, the last two books in the trilogy and The Becoming of Noah Shaw I own all in hardcover. And the original copy that I have of this book that I read... Um, I owned in soft cover, and I wanted them all to match, and I'm gonna get rid of that one and trade it in later, um, but now I have one that, that goes, and it's so pretty. This is one of my favorite books ever. Everyone knows what this is, but if you don't, it's basically just a bunch of teenagers. They play with a Ouija board, and then shit goes wrong, and there's lots of hallucinations. It's very horror-esque. There's an unreliable narrator, and I just love them all so much. This is just fantastic. And then the last book is And Again by Ch Jessica Shariella? Possibly you say it like that? I don't know. Um, this is a book, an adult uh, contemporary literary book about, well, more dystopian, I guess, because it is about these couple, like three or four people who have some sort of illness. 
and they all get offered this procedure where they can kind of get a new body. It's still going to look like their old body, but it's going to be a body that after they get this procedure, it will be devoid of, like, illness and all that shit. But also if they have tattoos or piercings or markings or things that identify them, they'll all be gone. And it's like a blank slate body. Um, as somebody who has lots of health shit, I have been, like, this concept really intrigued me. And I've always wanted to pick this up, but I can never, I was never too into the idea enough to pick it up full price, so seeing it for two dollars at Goodwill, I picked it up. And that's it. Those are all the books. That's like 17 books, which is better than what I usually do, but it's still a lot. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and please like, subscribe, do all that shit if you want to see more of my face and my books. Bye.